Yeah, buzz of YouTube. What's up? How's it going, everybody? Half of y'all today a pretty awesome video for the first upload of today, and that is going to be the draft analysis of the Durham Dragons in the PGBL season two. Now, this is a bit of a smaller league with uh, some lesser known uh, YouTubers out there, but it's a league that I wanted to join because this is going to be our first Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon show, uh, not showdown, but Wi-Fi league that the Durham Dragons will be joining. And I wanted to have a bit of fun because I wanted to try out some new things and I wanted to be able to uh, just exper experiment with new mons in general. So if you guys are excited for this and you hope that the Durham Dragons can hopefully take another championship, make sure to hit that like button down below and let me know what you guys think about our draft. So yeah, of course the draft analysis video is going to be me talking about uh, the initial picks that I did make for our team, the Durham Dragons. So a couple things before I get into this, I'll try to leave a link to all the coaches down in the description for you guys to go check out. And week one should be uploaded on the uh, 16th, if I am not mistaken. So be on the lookout for that. I'm very, very excited for this draft league. Again, our first Ultra Sun and Moon draft league and our first league since winning the GBA D League, which was pretty awesome as well. So in this league, we were only able to draft 10 Pokemon. Typically, leagues that I've been in have been always 11 Pokemon. So it was a little bit odd trying to draft only 10 Pokemon because that means there may be something missing on the draft or something could be overlooked. So that was something I had to keep in mind. Also, there was a bit of an odd way of like drafting Pokemon. Like the point process was a little bit odd. Like it wasn't anything too like extreme or anything wild, but it was definitely very interesting. So it was a little bit fun at the same time, like a little bit hectic with only being able to have 10 Pokemon instead of 11, because again, you may be missing out on like one type or just something important. So I had to keep that in mind throughout the entire draft so of course me being bad luck leo never ever getting lucky when it comes to drafting i honestly don't think i've ever been i think the the closest i've been to number one has been like number seven and i think that was in gba d league when there was only 10 people so this time i was number 11 out of 14 so i was kind of near the end of the drafting but almost kind of getting a wheel pick so it wasn't necessarily too bad um as opposed to like i guess being maybe like stuck in the middle although i wouldn't have minded being last if i if i was currently number 11 anyway so it's not that big of an issue but at number 11 i had to be realistic with uh the picks that i wanted to get so i knew i wasn't gonna get something broken like tapu lele or Naganadel or something really good like landorus or tapu coco of course all four of those went in the first five picks so yeah it's not surprising at all and yeah Naganadel and tapu lele are legal in this league so that's gonna be terrifying to deal with honestly i don't I really don't want to play those or prep for them. But hey, we're probably going to have to. And hopefully we will be able to pull out Ws either way. So at number 11, this was one of my top three Pokemons that I... Pokemons. <laughs> Pokemons already Pearl. Pearl. One of the top three Pokemon that I've wanted to use for a very, very long time now. And I was like, you know what? This is my opportunity. I'm going to get this Mon and it's going to be awesome. And our first team member of the Durham Drudagons is going to be... Zygarde 50% yes ladies and gentlemen Snick has fallen to me as our number one pick for the Durham Dragons at number 11 and this is really awesome as you can see this is going to be one of our Z crystal users we have two Z crystal mons that we all could have chosen between our drafts there was no limitations on what exactly we wanted to make Z mon so of course Zygarde with uh, Z crystals is absolutely amazing man this thing already alone Zygarde 50% in my honest opinion I feel like Zygarde 50% is one of those Pokemon that could be borderline broken maybe not borderline broken but borderline just too good for draft I don't know Draftly, I guess that's kind of in the same sense, and maybe I'm just contradicting myself. But the thing about Zygarde is this move right here, Thousand Arrows. So the great thing about Zygarde is that you honestly only have to cover 
one type for Zygarde, and that is Grass types. Yeah, they you your opponent can bring Fairy types and they can draft Fairy types, but Thousand Arrows is still hitting them for neutral damage, and if it's boosted, it's still going to be doing pretty good damage. And that's where being able to get rid of Grass types for Zygarde is really, really important. Also, of course, you do want to make sure to cover the Fairy type, so if you're in the situation, you can safely go for an Outrage with Zygarde here, which Outrage coming from this is very, very strong. And... The cool thing about Zygarde is, as I mentioned, you really only need to cover getting rid of grass types because otherwise, Zygarde just comes in. It can Dragon Dance, it can Coil if it's Banded or Scarfed, it just spams Thousand Arrows and can honestly just destroy so many teams because typically teams only draft one grass type. And usually they have like Levitating Pokemon or they have Flying type Pokemon, but Thousand Arrows doesn't care about flying types or levitating Pokemon. It only cares about grass types, so that's why I kind of think Zygarde is a Pokemon that could possibly be a little too good for draft format if built around properly. The good thing about Zygarde 2 is that it, on it honestly does have some pretty cool moves. Of course, Extreme Speed, Coil. Another cool thing I figured out was that it actually learns Haze. I had no idea Zygarde even learned Haze, so maybe that'll be pretty cool to try out. Even Core Enfor Enforcer could have some benefits in being used. And of course, this thing is just a very devastating setup sweeper of course with the z crystals it's not just dragonium z we can use every z crystal i just figured that dragonium z was the be best one to put on zygarde here but yeah dragon and zygarde is absurdly crazy as well it's only four times weak to ice which even then it can still take some non uh, stabbed ice moves very easily it can even take moonblast pretty solid as well depending on what pokemon is attacking it has really amazing stats across the board and even its base 81 special attack is realistically not that bad at all in my opinion so i'm really hoping that i'll be able to use zygarde to its full potential in this league and also a cool thing about this being a z Moomon is that we can run sludge wave to also be able to get rid of opposing grass types if we come into that scenario so i'm definitely hoping that zygarde puts in a lot of work yeah our ability realistically is not the best like this ability is almost just useless for zygarde but it doesn't really matter when zygarde is already an absolute monster so yeah very very happy that i was able to get zygarde round one so coming back to me to round two after uh, four more picks this was honestly a round two pick that i did not expect that i was going to be able to get just because it was in tier two and for this Pokemon being in tier 2, it is honestly a steal and that is going to be my boy Guerrero, the Infernape. I absolutely love Infernape, man. Infernape is just such a great Pokemon, honestly, in draft league format. Because of its great offensive stats and great speed, this thing can be physical, it can be special, it can be mixed, scarfed, specs. Banded, Nasty Plot, Sword Zance, Calm Mind, Bulk Up, and it could it could even possibly run a bulky set because of Slack Off. Also, it gets access to Stealth Rocks and U-Turn, which are two really good moves that can definitely benefit from Infernape. Also has access to another form of priority in both uh, Mock Punch and Vacuum Wing. A vacuum wave as well as fake out which is also really awesome a lot of good coverage moves as well with gunk shot thunder punch grass knot and it can definitely take advantage of those because of its boosting moves and nasty plot and sword zance which is going to be pretty awesome in my opinion of course it does get access to taunt and endeavor as well for being able to be potentially a uh, suicide stealth rock lead or just being able to guarantee keeping something at a very low amount of hp also two really good abilities in blaze and iron fist and the great thing about infernape is that this is a fire type that just about deals with any type of grass Pokemon that Zygarde otherwise may have issues with. And with Gunk Shot and Poison Jab, this thing is going to be able to also severely dent fairy type Pokemon so Zygarde can come in and have an easier time against them and beating them 1v1, which is really awesome. So, as 
good as of an offensive core this is, I am very, very happy about it, man. Like, yeah, they do have some flaws. Uh, the speed tiers are not that great because anything with base 110 or more obviously will be faster, although the priority is really nice. Stealth Rocks is really great as well, and I'm definitely hoping to be able to use Infernape to its full potential like I was able to use it very well in the TBU back in regular Sun and Moon. So moving on to round number three, this was honestly another pick that I did not expect would come back to me especially since I have to pick number since I have to pick a number 11 again going into round three because round one I went to 11 then round two I got third pick and then round three I got 11th pick again and the crazy thing about this is that in this league speed pass is allowed so you can baton pass speed by itself or you can baton pass any number of other boosted stats without speed and just the fact that speed pass is allowed makes this pokemon i honestly think 10 times better and another absolute steal in tier 2 and that is going to be samantha the scolipede i was able to use scolipede in ccld league where it put in a lot of work and as you can see this is going to be our second and final z move mon because if i'm being completely honest with you guys Z move swords dance speed boost scolipede can literally just sweep through teams by itself like scolipede in general is absolutely terrifying but the fact that i'm also able to baton pass speed potentially to a zygarde or one of our other team members is actually kind of insane and that's what really makes scolipede just so much better not to mention that it also gets access to two amazing forms of entry hazards spikes are really loved by infernape to be able to pick up those extra two akos or okos and then toxic spikes are a giant 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 uh lovely factor of being paired up with zygarde because we all know how devastating sub protect zygarde could be or just substitute coil zygarde in general with t spikes and sub coil protect thousand arrow zygarde can just dismantle teams on its own it also gets access to iron defense so i could potentially uh baton pass iron defense boosts although i wouldn't be able to do that with speed boost so if my opponent didn't see that i don't have speed boost they could get a little bit suspicious but i can definitely baton pass speed by itself which again alone is absolutely amazing scolipede does have a very good array of coverage and moves with aqua tail earthquake um, rock slide if I'm not mistaken uh, even bug bite and x scissor could be useful to us iron tail could possibly come into play in some matchups although I'm not really too sure right now off the top of my head uh, what else superpower of course is really good throw top uh, throat chop may not even be that bad either because those can turn into all up pummeling and black hole eclipse respectively and potentially get a crucial ko or two depending on how things go but all in all i honestly think that round three scolipede was an absolute steal a big thing about round three was that all the megas i wanted actually got picked in round three so at this point i was like i might as well get scolipede man there's no way i'm gonna risk one of the other two people after me potentially getting scolipede when i really want to use speed pass with scolipede and just scolipede in general is an absolute monster after uh, jolt tossed me with it in our week one gba d league match so coming back to me in round uh four i think this might have been a little bit of an early pick if i'm being honest with you guys but the thing about this pick was that it's well, the thing about it was that looking at all the current drafts there was a good chance that this pick might have actually gone between the rest of round four and leading in to or the rest of round three leading into no 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 what am i talking about yeah the rest of round four leading into round five there was a chance that this pokemon might have got picked so i decided to go with the mvp of our gba d league season three finals match and the mon that took us to our second championship and that is going to be my boy snorlax aka munchies for this league and snorlax of course you guys know is an absolute monster not to mention that this pokemon right here absolutely loves 
to receive defense boosts because that would just allow it to be able to set up a lot easier. Actually, one thing I did overlook about Scolipede was that it was our second answer to Grass-type Pokemon as well as being a Poison-type that can deal with Fairy-types for Zygarde. So that was really huge. So at this point, again, I really wanted this because I really felt like it wasn't going to come back to me uh, leading into round 5. And I knew that I could probably wait a little bit more for a Mega because realistically, I didn't know at this point what Mega I actually wanted. So I decided to go with my gut and go with Snorlax. Snorlax also adds a nice little bit of bulk to our draft because at this point we had three very good offensive mons although Scolipede and Zygarde do have some decent bulk respectively so that's not uh, really too bad but the great thing about Snorlax is that this is going to be a really important mon to potentially deal with some of the very very scary especially offensive threats that we may have to deal with in our matchup so Snorlax of course has access to Gluttony which allows it to take advantage of the new berries and Figgy Berry and Iapapa Berry respectively and of course Recycle is extremely good with one of these berries and Gluttony not to mention that if my opponent doesn't have a really hard hitting fighting type then Snorlax can just come in and curse up and just sweep through so many teams it's also just an amazing assault vest pokemon and just a really good pivot pokemon in general yeah it's physical defense is not that great and as we know snorlax is extremely slow it still has that humongous base 160 hp stat not to mention that it gets so many good coverage moves it gets all the elemental punches it gets earthquake i think it gets stone edge rock slide gunk shot heavy slam it even gets pursuit which is pretty awesome just snorlax can learn so many things seed bomb even if if we maybe run into uh, pokemon that are four times weak to that we could definitely bring that zen headbutt wild charge like there's so many different things that Snorlax can honestly do and it's another Pokemon that honestly really loves spike support as well to be able to get those crucial 2 KOs or Okos with its stab moves or just its coverage moves in general. So moving on to round number 5 at this point I was like I need to get a Mega here because if I prop if I try if I pass this up for another round there is a chance that I may not be able to get it because I believe at this point there was realistically only one other team that could have possibly chosen this mega and because if I did end up choosing a lower tier mega the way that I was structuring my draft I wouldn't be able to take advantage of those extra points I decided to bite the bullet and just stick with a tier 1 mega which is typically something I don't like to do I usually like to take lower tier megas to be able to use those extra points to my advantage to maybe have a extra of a higher tier mon but in this case I was like it's really not that big of an issue so I decided to go with a mega that I've seen my boy Gypsy King use absolutely amazingly and that is going to be Carmella the Mega Deonsi and Mega Deonsi is honestly a really cool Mega in my opinion and some players opinions this is an easy top 5 mega in the draft league format because look at its offensive stats and its great bulk base 160 physical and special attack which means with even little investment this thing is doing so much damage base 110 speed is very great as well and it also gives me a second stealth rocker so i don't have to just solely rely on my infernape being able to get up stealth rocks it can also be a very scary rock polish pokemon it gets access to calm mind as well diamond storm of course is an amazing physical stab move so i don't have to risk the low accuracy of stone edge endeavor also is really cool heal bow is a nice way of being able to support our team power gem moon blast of course are very nice especially offensive moves it also gets earth power psychic psy shock uh, all the hidden powers of course and another great thing about uh, mega deonsi is that it also gets endeavor which endeavor in theory in some matchups could actually really end up coming in handy and another huge thing about it is this right here magic bounce because you know why of course because of Scolipede. So if I make Mega Deonsi one of my Baton Pass recipient Pokemon and my opponent's plan is to try and whirlwind me or roar me, 
uh, trying to prevent me from baton passing boost. Once I mega evolved and I get the magic bounce, I just switch this in. And then they can't roar me and they can't whirlwind me out and I have my free boost on my Deontay and then from there I can start sweeping or I can start boosting even more to make Mega Deontay an even bigger threat. So I'm actually really excited to be able to use Mega Deontay. I'm hoping that I will be able to use it to its full potential like my boy Gypsy King was able to do so and I actually want to give a little shout out to In Vivid Color so thank you my mans for not drafting this and I was able to get it uh, in round 5. So going in to round 6, this was honestly another steel pick in my opinion and this was a Pokemon that in early Sun and Moon was a mon that I actually drafted but it was in a time where it was absurdly ranked like it was literally tier 1 and afterwards we realized oh hey this thing is actually really not that good but it was able to get a couple new toys in ultra sun and moon and that is going to be my boy Tego the Necrozma again our third stealth rock pokemon which is really great and the cool thing about Necrozma in ultra sun and moon is that it got access to heat wave knockoff and earth power being able to give it some really good coverage moves. I believe in this tiering system, it was actually tier 3, which in my opinion, tier 3 Necrozma is an absolute steal. Necrozma is, I honestly think, the definition of a jack of all trades. It can do a lot of good things, while it may not excel at one certain thing, it's still something that if your opponent doesn't properly prepare for, then a different set could end up wrecking them because that's just how Necrozma is. This thing can be a great defensive or supportive mon, it can go physical, it can go special, it can set up in all sorts of ways. Also with Photon Geyser, it can play mind games on whether or not it's going to be physical or it's going to be special depending on how it's EV'd and that could actually really come in clutch in certain scenarios as well. Not to mention that this is yet another amazing Pokemon that benefits so much from receiving baton pass boosts from Scolipede because it does get access to stored power so the more boosts I'm able to pass into Necrozma the stronger stored power is going to be and then if I still have a setup move on Necrozma I can take advantage of those baton pass boosts and continue boosting to the point where Necrozma will be able to just sweep teams that don't have a dark type or once they lose that dark type Necrozma comes in and just puts in nothing but the finest of work of course weakness policy is also a really cool item to have on necrozma because thanks to prism armor it is taking slightly less damage from super effective moves which in turn makes necrozma actually a bit bulkier than it really is and that i think is definitely a huge benefit so i'm hoping that necrozma on this team will be able to put in a lot of work as you can see we have a very a mix of offensive and kind of bulky mons so moving on to pick number seven at this point in the draft I started looking at what everybody had drafted so far and it dawned on me that not many drafts actually have a dark type at this moment in the draft I initially was going to try and get either a steel type or a water type but seeing as most other teams already had steel types or water types or even if they did pick the steel type or water type that I wanted then I still had backups I decided to go ahead and this round pick up one of my lower tier picks and get a dark type and that is going to be Moody aka the Sneasel and Sneasel is actually one of those Pokemon that I've been wanting to use for a while now in draft league format it's just basically a Weavile Jr. it's definitely a really good budget pick in my opinion and just an amazing dark type in general I've been using Sneasel a lot in the NU tier and I'm hoping that it will be able to put in work in this draft league format because this is my first time using it in draft league format and the cool thing about Sneasel is that it does have some very nice offensive moves it gets aerial ace poison jab icicle crash ice shard knockoff pursuit which is really awesome I believe it gets throat chop if I am not mistaken also thanks to the fact that it is a pre-evolution of a Pokemon it could potentially take advantage of a violite and I could even run like a swords dance set so that's pretty awesome and punishment is also something that is very very cool 
cool because if my opponent has a super bulky psychic type that's going to try and set up, the more boosts it's going to get, the stronger punishment becomes from Sneasel. And that's what makes it really terrifying in my opinion. Also, I think it gets fake out if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, fake out another form of priority, which is really, really awesome. If I learned anything in the GBA D League is that priority can definitely be very, very crucial. So at this point, this gives us, I believe, our third Pokemon with a form of priority, which can be pretty awesome. Also, it gets access to Shadow Claw and even Ice Punch. If I feel like I can run both Ice Punch and Icicle Crash, then I don't have to worry about missing Icicle Crash and I can just rely on Ice Punch, so that's also pretty awesome. All in all, really excited to use Sneasel. This also gives us another really nice uh, speed tier in base 115. So going on to round number 8, this was in the same boat as Sneasel essentially. It was a pick of where I saw that all my opponents, or not all my opponents, sorry, but everybody else drafting did not have this type. And this was a Pokemon I really felt was not going to come back to me if I didn't get it this round. And it also was going to allow me to fulfill one of the requirements for drafting, which was getting two Tier 4 Pokemon. So because Sneasel was Tier 4, that was one of my two Tier 4s. So at this point, I was like, I might as well go ahead and get my second Tier 4 just to round it off. And then my final two picks will be my free picks. So I decided to go with a Pokemon that I've considered in the past, but I never really gave too much thought into drafting. And and that is going to be Serena. Now, the cool thing about Serena in Ultra Sun and Moon is that it now gets access to not only Power Whip, but also Knock Off. And Power Whip is actually really nice because this is definitely a lot stronger than Trop Kick. It's almost twice the power of Trop Kick, which is kind of insane because it now allows Serena to take advantage of its base 120 uh physical attack stat and it also honestly has really good decent bulk like base 72 hp 89 defense and 89 super def is not bad at all in my opinion this also gives me a form of hazard removal in the form of rapid spin which is something that my draft really needed at this point also this gives me a ground resist because ground types would be a major pain to this draft so far by having serena i can definitely switch this into most or any type of ground type move and not be worried leaf guard and queenly magistry are also two Two really good abilities if I'm worried about my opponent having some type of priority move Quinley Majesty can definitely come in handy and then Leaf Guard potentially if we face a Sun team which I don't think we do but that also kind of comes in handy and it's hidden ability really isn't uh, too useful but mainly Quinley Majesty is uh, one of the better abilities that she does get also aromatherapy is going to be really nice because that gives us a second form of being able to potentially get rid of status moves on our teams also with serena having access to high jump kick and uh, play rough and just some pretty decent physical move coverage as well that can just mean that it's going to be able to take even more advantage of its great physical attack stat which again is based 120 and u-turn of course is absolutely phenomenal because this is yet another way of us being able to gain some type of momentum and actually one quick thing about sneasel is that that is i believe our third answer to grass types for our boy zygarde so that's pretty awesome as well so very excited to use serena really hoping that this thing puts in a lot of work and moving on to our second to last pick at this point i realized that i needed to go ahead and get a steel type and a water type and if i really wanted to i could have possibly got empoleon at this spot but the thing about empoleon is that i don't like empoleon plus i still needed another fire resist so there was no way that i would want to go ahead and get empoleon when i may not get another fire resist so i decided to go well actually to be fair i wanted cabalion as my steel type but my boys in the bullet punch club uh, were chirping me about the fact that i didn't really have a good uh, psychic switching outside of sneasel and necrozma and that fairy types could be a bit of a problem so i decided to bite the bullet and i went with klefki 
as our steel type being able to round out our fairy dragon steel core with mega deonce and zygarde so the cool thing about klefki is that in this generation it now well not this generation but in ultra sun and moon it now gets access to defog which means we have magic bounce rapid spin and prankster defog to be able to deal with hazards which in general is actually pretty awesome in my opinion not to mention that klefki gets so many good prankster moves it gets spikes thunder wave toxic dual screens even like magnet rise can come in handy in some scenarios even like a calm mindset could possibly be something that i may try to run in this league uh it has some pretty decent overall bulk base 57 hp 91 defense and 87 spa def may not be the best bulk around but clef he can definitely live some super effective hits very easily if they're not stabbed or even if they're coming off of something that is stabbed as long as they're not extremely powerful clef key can definitely live them and in very clutch scenarios i can have speed control because of thunder wave i can have a priority way of getting rid of spikes potentially because of defog and just being able to toxic walls or get up a form of hazard if i need to or dual screens to be able to support set up sneasel set up infernape zygarde necrozma snorlax or scolipede so yeah klefki really added so much needed utility to our draft at this point and again it gave us that steel type that's able to resist uh will not be affected by dragon moves actually but it resists uh fairy type moves and it resists um dark type moves as well as being able to resist psychic type moves which is pretty awesome so while i would have liked to have a steel type that got stealth rocks i didn't want something like bronzong and metagross had already got picked so i definitely felt like cuff key was a much better pick as our steel type although i do really wish i had cabalion but i can see why cleft key is a much better addition to our draft so moving on to our 10th and final pick at this point you guys should know that it is going to be a water type and i really didn't know what water type was going to come to me in the final round some teams didn't have water types already so i was expecting if anything i could at least end up with like slow king or jellison but luckily the main water type i wanted was actually able to come back to me in round 10 and that is going to be triple h2o shouts out to my boy tone was it tone i believe it was tone who gave me this name and that is going to be Vaporeon. Vaporeon has actually been something that I've considered drafting in the past before. It's a Pokemon that I've given some thought to and that I really heavily considered but ultimately just didn't end up drafting. And the great thing about Vaporeon on this specific draft is that it not only rounds out our fire water grass core but it gives us a very bulky water type. It also gives us wish support, phasing support, and it gives us another baton pass pokemon because vaporeon gets access to curse acid armor and workup all three of which can be baton pass to one or more of our team members that we've drafted so far not to mention that with this thing being able to pass off these massive wishes there is a good chance that our walls are not going to be taken down without a fight or without some hacks and i guess in certain scenarios vaporeon could even run a offensive set maybe even choice scarf could come to some matchups i'm not sure but vaporeon another great pokemon that adds some very nice utility to our draft and a nice little bit of a defensive backbone also it gets access to haze if i'm worried about roar so that's really nice heal bell of course is also great as well because it gives us a third way of being able to guarantee getting rid of any type of statuses on our team scald of course is an absolutely amazing move that when it burns you automatically get so much value from it so that's just a really good spammable move in general and even aqua ring can be baton passed with acid armor or workup or curse which is actually really really awesome that i that actually just clicked in my mind right now so i'm actually pretty excited to have vaporeon on our draft here so yeah guys that is the initial draft of the durham dreadagons in the pgbl season two so let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about our draft 
If you are excited for the Durham Dragons to potentially take another championship, hit that like button down below and show off your support. And with that being said, guys, I will see y'all later today with a Wi-Fi battle and next week on the 16th with week one of the second season of PGBL. So with that being said, guys, I'll see you all later. So later, everybody. No matter where you're at, I'm not here to make friends. It's time to attack and deplete your HP with a final smash. Don't make me turn around and pull a six foot hacks. <laughs> six foot, six foot hacks, hacks. Yeah. Six foot, six foot hacks, hacks. Yeah. Six foot, six foot hacks, hacks.